All right guys, so today I'm gonna to cover something a little bit different. This video uh, is quite niche. It's for people who don't do well at school, who didn't do well at school, who had a hard time at school, who had a hard time in college, who don't like what they're doing, but think they have to do it anyways. I think this video will speak to you a lot. It might give you a bit of hope, might give you a bit of encouragement and make you understand and feel like Okay, you still have a lot to offer even though school wasn't for you. School definitely wasn't for me. Uh, I did three leave inserts. I, I struggled, I would say, big time in school. I had a good time, I had fun, I met a lot of people. Um, I, I met a lot of friends in that respect. But in the actual learning part of school, I had a very, very hard time. I couldn't sit down and learn the way they wanted me to learn. I had a problem with authority, it clashed with teachers a lot was always that person, that annoying person in the class asking what's the point in learning this, what's the point in doing this, when is this ever going to be valuable as we grow up. I felt very stupid in school, I was made feel very stupid a lot of the time. I was made feel like just because I couldn't learn a certain way that I wasn't good enough to do certain things and I think that's what school does an awful lot. And I've put an awful lot of research, uh, put an awful lot of time, put an awful lot of thought into why I couldn't get good at school, why I couldn't learn what I needed to learn to progress in college, to get good courses, to get uh, higher points in the Leaving Cert. No matter what I did in that conventional way, I just couldn't get better at it. I've put huge amounts of thought into why I can learn so much now and why I learn so much nearly every week for the last five years, but when I was in school situation, I couldn't learn that. I went to college, did arts, because, you know, didn't get the points for much else, and that's what you do, you finish school, you go to college, that's the next logical step. Did three years in college, passed my exams, but dropped out uh, of, after my third year or four year course, and left the education system very frustrated, um, ver feeling like I was stupid, feeling like I didn't have much capacity to learn, feeling like no matter how hard I tried, I wasn't able to just sit down and read uh, from a book and learn from a book and study, get better at what the education system tells us to get better at. So that's what this video is about. I hope it helps you learn, I hope it inspires you to learn, and I hope it helps you progress in whatever you're looking to get better at and you don't have to do it the school way. But a lot of people doing the leaving search, doing college exams around this time, uh, a lot of stress and anxiety that causes, I know that what that situation is like. I've been in it myself. Uh, I think this video is gonna speak to you. I hope it helps you, I hope it encourages you, Anna, and I hope it points you in the right direction, which I think it will. So with that said, I'm gonna go through, through a few points that I think all of you will find interesting no matter who you are, whether you're good at school or bad at school, no matter what job or career you want to go into, I think a lot of these points will help you. They'll help you understand the way you look at learning, the way you look at education, and they'll give you a perspective on learning, on getting better at things maybe that you hadn't seen before. So with that, let's start the video. Okay, so just before the video starts, or before we get into the main points of the video, this is not a video trying to shit on people who are good at school. Um, definitely not, okay? Being naturally good at school is a gift, and if you have that gift and you're good at it naturally, and you, what that way of learning and memorizing stuff comes easy to you, it's gonna take you a lot of places that other people, or people like myself, can't go. And you should use it wisely, and it's definitely a tool that can be used massively to your advantage. A lot like being naturally good looking. So a lot of anyone who says, oh, being good at school, naturally smart at school, doesn't matter, is, is stupid. Anyone that says being a naturally beautiful or a naturally good looking person doesn't matter is also stupid. Now, I was neither, I wasn't born either. Uh, I've had to work hard in my brain, and I obviously work hard at the way I look. But I'm never going to be a model, and I'm never going to be any rocket science, scientist or genius. But to say that those things naturally don't matter, they don't help you progress is stupid, because numerous uh, studies have shown that being good looking helps you get so, so much further in an awful lot of ways. 
Uh, it's not the ultimate decider of your success or not, but it does help in an awful lot of situations. And being naturally smart is a gift. It can help you massively and help you progress in an awful lot of situations, but it's not, again, the ultimate um, in terms of deciding whether you're successful or not. Also, I'd like to, I would definitely say that I'm a bit fascinated and always have been by people who are naturally smart. Um, naturally getting high points in exams, naturally doing good courses. I've always interested me a lot because I know I'm not like that. So it interests me what their internal dialogue is like, what their self-talk is like, the way they think about things, the way they think about problems. And what especially interests me is people who are naturally very fit, athletic and keep themselves in good shape and naturally very book smart as well. I think people like that are very, very interesting. And I always ask them a lot of questions and I'm always interested by them. Even though I know they're nothing like me, uh, it still fascinates me a lot that someone is a very natural high achiever and I like to know about their routines like I do of any high achiever in Anthem. Now I think at this stage everyone knows that about that meme, if you judge everyone uh, by their ability to climb this tree, so it's the monkey climbing the tree obviously is going to be the king and then you have the goldfish and the elephant and whatever else and we're going to have a fair test for everyone, we'll judge you all by the ability to climb the tree. So everyone knows this by now, everyone knows that there's far more than one type of intelligence, number one. Everyone knows number two then, that very few people learn in school or even in college what they're gonna do for the rest of their lives or the jobs they're gonna get or how successful they're gonna be. Everyone knows that the two aren't linked at all and they know those two points inside out. There's far more types of intelligence than one than just being good at school and there's far, very, very few people who do in later life what they're doing in college or what they're good at in school. But it's like everyone knows calories matter in fitness and everyone knows, you know, move more and eat less is the way to lose weight. We know that already, but applying it and actually letting it into our brain and actually using it and thinking about it in a, in a logical way doesn't really happen, even though we know that bit of information already. So it's like I know exactly what to do to get in shape, but I still can't do it. It's a very similar situation in education. Even though we know all that, the education system still leaves a lot of very smart people feeling like they're geniuses and feeling like they're better than everyone else, which used to grind my fucking gears in school. You had a lot of people who were really good at memorizing stuff and really good at passing exams. But in my opinion, a lot, you know, some of them were still dumb fuckers. They might have had no people skills, no personality, an opinion of themselves that they were better ever than everyone else, which is definitely not a way to be successful or be happy. And that's what school gave them. It, so sometimes if we're really bad at school and we can't learn in that traditional memorize things, the memory test, the leave and search, the college exams, cram the night before type exams. If we can't learn that way and we can't apply ourselves in that way, we might have a learning disability or we can't sit down in the classroom and just do what you're told, sit down, uh, be obedient and learn off the board. We're told we might have a learning disability when actually most of the time What's happening is a teaching disability. Teachers are very poor at communicating their message, at getting inside the student's head, making the students learn, making the students have a passion for learning, and making the students realize that, okay, I can get the best out of myself by learning what we're talking about here in the classroom. Okay, so our next point brings us to why was school invented in the first place? So, School was invented, first of all, by industrialists who tried to make as many obedient factory workers as possible. So, I don't know the history of it inside out, but I've read about it a fair amount. So basically, that's why food, a school was founded. About 150 years ago, let's pack people into classrooms, let's get them to be obedient, to stay, inside the two walls to not bang off, uh, think outside the box too much so we can have more obedient factory workers and we can have more consumers that buy more stuff. It was born at the start of the Industrial Revolution and that's what, what its main purpose was. And it hasn't really moved on since then. So does school serve a purpose? 
it definitely, definitely serves a purpose in making us more socially aware of the people around us, to make us mix with as many people uh, as possible in our areas, wherever we go to school. It serves a purpose massively in terms of making someone a decent citizen or a decent person. Uh, it serves its purpose there. But in the, term, in the terms that I'm talking about today, which is learning, how to learn, how to pick things up, how to progress and make sure you find your passion and you can turn that into a job and you can turn that job into creativity and bringing value to the world. School has really lost any sort of meaning it had, if it ever had any meaning uh, to help you learn in the first place. So the big problem with school is if you're only learning something because I'm learning this because it's going to come up on the test, then there's no point learning that because if you've heard of an open book exam, life is an open book exam. Anything you need, anything you want, you can research straight away. You pick, it, you pick up your phone or any sort of a book on the topic and you can find out as much information as you can uh, within seconds. The ability for people in the poorest parts of the world who still have iPhones, and a lot of them do, to the richest part of the world, everyone has access to the same information with the click of a button. So this learning things off by heart and memorizing them and putting them on paper is pretty much useless in an awful lot of jobs in the 21st century. So the idea of we need to learn it because it's gonna come up on the test is defeats the whole purpose of learning. What you need to do learn is how to apply things and how to be creative in pro solving problems. Also, most of secondary education that I found anyway was you have to learn this or else. You have to study for the exam or else you have to pass this exam or else you're gonna fail or else you won't get a good college course or else you won't be able to get a good job, which is the worst way of motivating someone. Okay, it's a very in extrinsic form of motivation where it's all on the outside. You have to do it or else you'll fail or else you won't be able to be accepted by whatever business, by whatever college it might be in the future. When the best way to motivate anyone in any respect is to try and bring out the interest they have and try and bring out the passion in them and something that they have interest in so that they can learn, they can grow in that, they can develop it and they can offer something valuable out of their passion to the world. So the reason for learning something shouldn't be on the test, or shouldn't be because it's on the test, it should be because they love the subject and they can't wait to research more about it. Which for most school students, it just doesn't happen. They don't do things we're interested in. I'm lucky enough to have found a job where I can learn constantly all the time and have massive interest and desire to learn all the time. But most of us, in school, never approach anything like that. I didn't approach anything like that where I wanted to learn or I wanted to research more. Most of the time I was looking at things thinking, this is pointless, I have no interest in it, I don't want to learn it, and unless you can tell me why I need to learn it, I'm not gonna bother. When I'm trying to teach people things also, what I do is I get them, I tell them first, then I show them the action, either in a video, uh, on a board, something like this, or I demonstrate it myself, and then I you know, kinesthetically take them through where they're actually performing the action. And that's what makes me learn, that's what probably makes you learn the best as well. You, you look at it first, or you're told it first, then you look at it and you visually see it, and then you actually walk through it yourself. And if you can only learn that way, don't worry, okay? Because school doesn't cover that, and if you go into the real world, that's where most of the learning is, where you actually fuck up, make loads of mistakes by trying new things and trying different things yourself. You'd also have to question an awful lot of teachers that don't realize this, don't know this, and to their defense as well, they're not taught to teach this way. Everyone who doesn't learn the specific way of sit down, read, look at a board, and memorize this is a difficult student. When in real life, what you're paid for is making difficult topics and difficult theories, breaking them down into really simple things so they can be applied to in the real world. So I was definitely a difficult student, but uh, it's like being a difficult client in the gym. 
or a difficult, difficult player. Um, I'm a football coach, so you come across difficult players. The way I look at it now is you're a good teacher, you're a good coach, you're a good personal trainer by how you deal with the difficult cases and the hard cases, that what, that's what makes you good. Everyone knows how to deal with the straight A student, whether it's straight A client, straight A student in school, uh, straight A football player. Everyone knows how to deal with them who do anything they're told. But the real uh, money maker or the real gifted coach, teacher, uh, personal trainer is the one who can deal with the difficult cases, the people who only learn in certain types of ways. And that's what makes you a leader, makes you a very special teacher. And that's what most teachers just to have no interest in teaching people in that type of way. Uh, and, and they're not taught how to teach people in that type of way either. All right, so the next point is basic economics and is what you're learning in school actually valuable? So this I know will fascinate most people. The more I learned about this, the more I read about this and the more I do read about it, the more it interests me and the more it makes sense to me in the real world. So a basic economic principle or one of the most uh, simple things to understand or the first things you need to understand about economics is when something is rare, it's more valuable. When something isn't rare or it's very plentiful, it loses an awful lot of value. So what does that mean for education? Well. It applies massively to education as this education inflation that's happened where your leaving cert used to be valuable but now everyone has a leaving cert so it's not that valuable anymore. Your college degree used to be valuable, used to get you a very solid job because not many people had it. Now everyone has a college degree. Now everyone needs a master. So no matter what course you do now, there's so many degrees and there's so many people coming through the college system that the degree is worth far, far less than it used to be. So how do you explain this? So something is only perceived as valuable if few people can have it. So if I was to go uptown, or sorry, if I was to go into school, we use a school example. If I was going to school with three dairy milks and there was no or one else in the school with any dairy milks because they just didn't have them or they didn't have any chocolate left in Clemars. You'd be able to sell those dairy milks for a far, far higher price and the demand would be very high and you'd probably get good money for them. But if you went into school every day and there was chocolate bar given to every student every morning when they went in, it would have no value. So basically, that's a simple example but people just don't seem to get that when it comes to education. So Supreme, you know the, uh, the t-shirts and the clothing brand Supreme, but they deliberately massively underproduce their clothes so that demand is way, way higher and they can charge way, way more for them. And they get that brand image, that reputation of being rare, of everyone wants to have it. So if you bring that back to our education, our degree is worth far, far less than it used to be. 40 years ago, very few people had went to college, very few people had degrees. So when they came out of college, they were guaranteed a job in whatever their field would be. That's definitely not the case nowadays. So these days, teachers, um, say guards, nurses, earn far less and their wages are going down as more people are capable of being able to do these jobs. It doesn't mean they're working any less or it doesn't mean their work is any easier. Often, and I have a three or one of each guard teacher and nurse in my family, often they're working harder now than they used to, they're working longer hours than they used to, but the problem isn't how hard you work. You're not paid on how hard you work, you're paid on how rare it is the ability to carry out a certain job, how rare the dairy milk is, how rare the t-shirt is. So, your college degree that used to be brilliant, it's great to have a degree, we hear that all the time. At least you have a degree, at least you have a certification, at least you have something in your back pocket. It's going to help you in the future. It actually helps you far, far less than it used to and it's not near as valuable as it used to be. So think long and hard before you go to college and spend a lot of money on a degree that's fucking pointless. 
So arts degrees are more or less pointless in an awful lot of cases. Uh, business degrees in a lot of cases are pointless. Sports science, I know from personal training, from jobs and fitness, sports science degrees are pointless in an awful lot of situations. Obviously there's cases in all three of those degrees and those three are only examples that are coming to my head where they're very valuable and they help people go on to have meaningful jobs and meaningful careers but far far less than they used to. So unless you have your progression mapped out that when you get this degree you're going to move into something else, you're going to end up having a degree and spending a lot of time or wasting a lot of time and money on something that's not going to help you progress in life, it's going to help you earn more money or going to make you more valuable to society. So jobs which used to pay very, very well and have you set up for life, you earn, you'll earn this salary for the rest of your life, are going down and down in wages because more people are capable of doing them because more people have degrees. And jobs which you used to think that's a rubbish job or that's a job you'll never make money from that, you'll never make a living for that, are actually getting far more common and they're getting far more well paid. So a personal trainer 10 or 15 years ago, you were saying you were going to become a personal trainer. It was a waste of time, you know. Something like a hairdresser, something like someone who does, will take three female ones, uh, so you do people's makeup, you do people's hair, you do people's nails. Those three jobs have the potential to earn you a massive amount of money if you're very, very good, very creative in your craft and you have a massive passion and interest in it. With, and they could actually pay more than a lot of traditionally good jobs that people got coming out of college. Uh, f they're all feminine, feminine jobs. But I've seen instances in all three cases. Then maybe jobs in certain amount of construction. So construction, there used to be no demand very few, a few years ago when I started opening the gym for construction. It, it died because of the crash. Now stuff like electricians, pl plumbers, etc, which I know nothing about, I know they're in far higher demand and they're charging far, far more than they were. Personal trainers, why is that job in well paid, if you're good at it obviously, and no matter what the profession is, you still need to be very good at it. Why are personal trainers more in demand than they used to be? So 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there was no demand for a personal trainer. No one was going to pay someone to keep them in shape. But as obesity rises and more people need to know and need to be coached on how to stay healthy, get healthy and get into shape, the careers rise and the amount of demand for good ones goes higher and the basic economics works that way. Okay, so the next point is how do I be successful? So success with a question mark there. How do I turn my lack of success in education to be successful in something else? To, to learn and be successful in learning about things in something that's not school orientated. So the first point I want to make is I, you don't have to go viral. You know, you might think, okay, I wasn't good in school. I think that if I'm to get some sort of success in a job that's not done through college, that I'm going to need to be this viral hit and this mega YouTube star, this unicorn uh, that just hits home runs all the time and everything they put up, they're really popular. And because I see these type of people online, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook all the time. I need to be that if I'm going to be successful when I'm not in school. You couldn't be further from the truth. You only need a very few people, a very few clients a very, to affect a very few people and to have a deep impact on a very few people to be successful and to earn a living. So if 500 people watch this video and 1% of them get in touch with me, through say so five people out of the 500 that's five clients that's a huge return from a very, what would be seen as a very small amount of uh, views or a very small follow and a very small uh, interaction so five clients for me five new clients in one month would be a massive month because i've scaled my business that I don't need many people, I don't need to go viral, I don't need queues of people coming in the door to make a living off it. 
and you'd be surprised at how many businesses are like that they don't need huge amounts of people they just need to be really good at what they do and have a real deep connection with the people they serve and to have that connection with people that they keep coming to them maybe not all the time or maybe not year round but every so often they come to them and they have a constant stream of clients who believe in the message they're sending and it makes them feel better and there's, they're offering real value to the person. So success for me um, quite early was making the average industrial wage from doing something I love. And if people had that mindset more often they'd realize that happiness is and success is really close to them making the average industrial wage won't go viral on youtube it won't go viral on instagram you won't see many ads on instagram telling you oh be successful by having the average industrial wage it's just, it's not it's not something that's a blow up online but it's still success because you're doing what you makes you happy and you're earning uh, a sufficient wage from it and you get to enjoy your work every day which is very very rare people who go to work every day and enjoy what they do is very rare people who go to college and enjoy what they learn every day is very rare so the object should be to do what you love doing and find a way to do what you love all the time and to make a living out of it rather than to go viral or to be this massive hit which a lot of people in school right now, in college right now, think you need to be at this day and age. Uh, I've been able to define what makes me happy, what makes me, what's going to help me become more successful and better and better at what I do. I've been able to define that through a lot of the books I read, the interactions I've had with people from my family to my friends to people um, in the fitness industry that I really aspire to be like through meeting people through football i've been able to define three things that are going to bring me progress and that progress is the feeling of success in an awful lot of ways they're tied in progress and the feeling of success so creativity curiosity and leadership whenever i'm unsure of what i'm doing whenever i'm unsure of what i need to do whenever i'm feeling like uh, i'm not making enough progress or i'm not doing in a happy place or I'm not in a happy place sounds a bit woo woo but whenever I feel like I'm not in a good place mentally I always look to those three things and try and learn more about those three things curiosity creativity leadership none of the three are taught in school uh, school can often damage your curiosity damage your creativity and damage any uh, sign of leadership that you're showing or any sign of thinking outside the box any sign of banging off the walls too much it can try and put you back in that box so we're naturally born with a lot of creativity in us and a lot of people think that we don't develop creativity that it's naturally there we don't develop curiosity that it's naturally there and it's beaten out of us so leadership is different i think anyway i think leadership is developed and it's through something you learn and i always try and be, read books on leadership and i could turn this video into a discussion on creativity curiosity and leadership because i've done so much research on them and i'm so interested in them and i'm so passionate about all three things but i'm not going to i'm going to keep it on education and talk about that at a later stage but if you can focus in and keep learning more about your craft through curiosity creativity and leadership bring a success in a way that school and college never could give you that feeling of success or that feeling of happiness or accomplishment an important note um, and an important personal thing for me was that i absolutely hated books in school i hated them i couldn't look at a book book books reminded me of sitting down and learning something i didn't want to learn um, looking and reading about stuff i didn't want to read about uh, trying to force my head to pick up stuff so that I would do better in exams even though I wasn't interested in the subjects that I was studying for the exams and in the last five years it took me five six years after I'd finished school to really settle down and say okay reading actually might be okay and I wouldn't associate it with horrible times and once I beat that and once I started reading about things I was actually curious about 
and actually interested in. I've been able to read more or less a book a month for the last three, uh, two, three years, which is crazy for me. It's absolutely crazy because in the previous decade, 10 years, I did not want to read. I did not want to sit down and look at a book. Uh, I, school killed my interest in learning. Okay, so my last final part of the video is my advice for people going through college and people going through school now that aren't getting on well, that are having a really tough time like I did. I felt worthless in a lot of situations throughout school and throughout college that if I didn't have my, my family around me and my parents' support, I think it would have had a far worse effect on me than it did. Uh, but that doesn't say it wasn't hard, it was very, very hard to be so poor at something I was putting so much effort into at the time. My advice would be, first of all, a little bit of motivation in two ways. Motivation by the carrot and the stick, by kicking a hole and putting the arm around your shoulder. So, first of all, putting the arm around your shoulder, giving you the carrot rather than the stick and encouraging you, I would say, don't let school, no matter who you are, no matter how much you're struggling, no matter how you're falling out with your coach, your teachers, uh, your lecturers, no matter how much pain you're going through in the education system, don't let it make you feel stupid, don't let it make you feel like you're not good enough, don't let it make you feel like it's the be all and end all and if you can't do well at this, then you're in big trouble for the rest of your life. You're not. Okay, there's plenty of other things, there's plenty of other ways you can become mega successful, uh, not go viral, that's not mega successful uh, for the average Joe like me. You can become very successful doing something you love for the rest of your life, doing something you have passion for, continuing to learn, continuing to grow, even though you can't grow inside this education system. You can do it, don't let it make you feel stupid. But now after that bit of encouragement, the other side of it is the stick. And so many millennials, so many people in college, in school now, need the stick because they think they're going to go from this poor place mentally and this poor place uh, emotionally that I was in myself to become the Conor McGregor, the rags to riches story, the viral success, the Lamborghini and Louis Vuitton lifestyle, which is absolute bullshit. That's the one in a million, one in ten million success story that you think you need to become. You don't, okay? And that's not what you should be aiming for. What you need to be aiming for is to become good at something you're interested in and to have passion for something and to have a desire to learn about something and grow in a field that makes you happy and that makes you proud to be a part of. Okay? That has nothing to do with viral success. It has nothing to do with blowing up massive on YouTube or Instagram. Try and get good at something. Try and offer people value. Try and offer the people in your life value and gain credibility in a field that you think is worth something that's offering something to the world that can offer a valuable service to people. So study what you love. Stay humble and be able to take constructive criticism. Constructive criticism is another one of those things that everyone, no matter who you ask them, no matter what they're doing, what sport they're playing, what college course they're in, what job they get. You ask someone, can you take constructive criticism? They'll say, oh yeah, no problem. I can, you can criticize me. I'm my own biggest critic. I can take constructive criticism and uh, it'll help me progress. Then when it actually comes to taking the criticism, they completely reject it. I see it all the time. Uh, they just lose humility and lose the ability to be able to take criticism and to be able to take advice from someone else and that's a big problem that uh, the millennial generation have okay like I'm only a few years older than you but I think there's a huge difference between people my age and their ability to take constructive criticism and feedback and to try and turn that into something positive and the generation just below us who do not want to hear it no matter what if you found this video interesting then I have a few things to recommend. So the first thing is a podcast with Seth Godin and Tim Ferriss. I'm gonna link all this up on the screen now. The second thing is a book called The Art of Learning by Josh Waitzkin. And the third thing is a YouTube video called Schools Kill Creativity. Now the three of them are 
absolutely fascinating by people far, far smarter than me, uh, who have a far better way of phrasing things, of wording things, of um, articulating the messages that I'm getting across in this video. If you're interested in what I said, you'll find those things not just interesting, you'll find them fascinating and enthralling and they'll change the way you think about the situations we're talking about in this video. And if you're unsure, if you're in a college course you hate, if you're in school and you just don't see yourself getting anything out of your leaving cert that's worthwhile. This is six things I would recommend that you spend the next three to five years getting better at and your life will dramatically improve the quality of life, how happy you are and every one of these six things are gonna massively help you no matter what job you're in, no matter what career you're in, no matter what relationships you go into, no matter if your friendships, uh, how you deal with intimate relationships, how you deal with your family. These six things will help all of those and they're not taught in school. So the number one is how to physically take care of yourself and how to exercise. So what type of physical training to do to keep you and get you in great shape is a crucially important skill that they don't teach in school that obviously I think they should. The second thing is how to cook healthy food and how to keep a controlled diet that keeps you in good physical shape, that keeps you healthy, that's good for your mental health, your physical health, your sleeping patterns and how to make healthy good ingredients taste fantastic. That's not taught in school and if it was taught in school we wouldn't have the obesity crisis that we have in Ireland at the minute. We live in the digital age so the third thing I'd recommend is how to video edit Get the 80-20 of how to video edit and how to edit photographs. That stuff isn't going away. The way we project ourselves through videos and through uh, photography isn't going away. And take it from someone who's completely techn technologically retarded like myself. If I can learn how to make basic videos and edit basic photos and take good photos, then absolutely anyone can. No one was worse with computers or worse with technology than me. So if you can learn those skills, they'll matter no matter what your profession is. If you're a plumber and you can present good images and good videos, it's just an absolute massive advantage in terms of marketing and digital marketing. Obviously, it needs to go along with being actually good at your job whether that's hairdressing or whatever it might be, personal training. But learning how to edit videos and photos is a very valuable skill in the 21st century. So the fourth thing you should learn is basic finance or basic economic principles. Okay, so that sounds complex and it sounds scary and it sounds school-like accounting, which I failed uh, miserably in the leave and search, the mocks. Um, just was a disaster at accounting. It sounds like something that's intimidating to learn, but I'm telling you now, if you learn some basic economic principles, basic personal finance principles, your life is going to be made so much easier. If you learn about things like value, depreciation, about how to manage your own money, how to make sure you're not wasting money, uh, if you learn about how to make sure you don't emotionally spend stuff or you don't emotionally impulse buy stuff. You are at an absolutely colossal advantage and, uh, and learn how not to spend money on shite, okay, basically. If you can pick up some tips from smart people who are able to break those points down to you simply through books or podcasts, face-to-face -face meetings, you're gonna make your life an awful lot better. And this is coming from me, who was the worst person you know at wasting money on shite, okay? But the last five, six years, I've uh, turned that around massively. Um, I'll make a video on consumerism and materialism in, in, the, in, in the future, in the next month or two, um, because I think I can help people a lot because I've came from a position of wasting so much money to be able to say now that I'm actually very smart or wise with my money. Not that I have loads of it, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying to how to spend your money properly so that it actually makes you happier and it, yeah, yeah, don't waste as much as what normal people do, which we're, we're, we're all, we've all been very, very guilty of. The fifth thing I'd recommend you learning as early as possible in your 20s, in your late teens, when you finish school, if you didn't get along in school, is how to be a people person 
how to have conversations with people. So that sounds like madness. It sounds like, okay. They definitely don't teach you people skills in school. And you can learn it so, so well by learning what motivates people, what makes them angry, what motivates, what motivates them in terms of like, motivation can be a woo woo thing. It can be like, you know, hashtag Monday motivation. But what I mean by motivate, what motivates someone to cry? or to get emotional? What motivates someone to be angry? What motivates someone to go to the gym to exercise? What motivates someone to spend money? If you can learn about human behavior and you can learn how to have a conversation with any type of person, young or old, um, like outgoing or introverted, uh, whatever nationality, if you can learn how to hold a conversation and, and be a decent person that's considered of the other person in the conversation, able to make eye contact, able to communicate your points clearly without being offensive and without being uh, and being open-minded into their point of views you're going to be at a very big advantage to most other people because these are the stuff these are the six things they don't teach in school that are extremely valuable no matter what job or what craft you go into like we said and the final thing of the six is we've never had more access to information and to knowledge okay so like I talked about a little bit earlier on, there's this de democratization of knowledge. I think that's what it's called, democratization of knowledge, where someone in Silicon Valley has the same amount of knowledge in their phone as someone in a far poorer part of the world. Okay, so some 16 year old kid in somewhere in Africa or Asia has the same amount of knowledge on their phone, provided they have an internet connection, which even the most remote places in the world are starting to have has the same as the wealthiest part of the world. So we consume so much information, we consume, over consume food, we over consume so much in our lives. So a massive mental skill is to be able to consume less. Okay, so that sounds mad, but it's actually critical. If you can control the amount you eat and not over consume food, not over consume alcohol or drugs, not over consume too much data on your phone uh, through all the social medias constantly bombarding you. The news channels, newspapers constantly trying to shock you and give you uh, and clickbait you into stuff. If you can control that, you're gonna be a far happier person, far more useful person that you're not chicken little thinking the sky is falling down every day because of what you hear and what you see on the various news and the various media outlets. So along coupled with that, I would put stuff like meditation is a very rare thing that's massively helpful and more helpful now than it ever was because of this overconsumption of information. Along with reading, far uh, less people read now, they want short 30 seconds videos, they don't want the six hour, 12 hour book, they want the short, shortest possible bang, 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 flashing images, information. If you can sit down and actually read and all the emotional and uh, psychological benefits that come with that and not this clickbait stuff, you're at a massive advantage and you're going to be a far, far happier person. So that's the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's a topic I could talk about all the time. I know everyone watching this isn't going to agree with what I'm saying, but that's the point. I hope you don't and I'd love to hear from you whether you agree, whether you don't agree, whether you found this video interesting or not, whether you think school is absolutely crucial and it's so important that if you're you know, you're not good at school, you're never going to be good at anything, or if you're on the flip side, you think school is an absolute waste of time. As usual, I think the answer is somewhere in the middle. Uh, it's definitely overrated. Don't feel bad about yourself, like I said, if, you're not, if schools and college education isn't for you. Uh, it definitely wasn't for me, and I didn't thrive in it at all, but it hasn't stopped my learning. As usual, thanks for watching. Don't forget to link, uh, like and subscribe. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you shared it. Thanks guys for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.